So when I was in secondary school, I was uh, from St. Joseph's Institution. Um, there was this. There was this thing called the Schools Talentine, organized by a toothpaste company. I don't know why. <laughs> and it was an inter-school talent. I mean, something that I think they should do today. It was very, very fun, and it made it, all the you know in, people interested in music all over Singapore got to get together. And they had the usual heat, semi-finals, semi-finals, everything. And so I joined a group called Harmony. It was three friends of mine um, who needed a pianist. <laughs> so yeah, they, you know, I was so excited because I thought I could sing to them, but they said, no, you just sit there and play the piano, we'll be performing here. So um, I said, fine, you know, anything, it was, my first, it was my first sort of like involvement with pop music. So I did that, we took part in that year's talent time, I think it was in six, four that year, and we came in second, not bad. Um, and after that, we went on to perform at various, uh, Trade fairs. Okay, now not as talent, not taking part in talent, talent, but more like guest performers. And also, uh, at that time, TV was sort of still quite new, and there was a lot of local entertainment, local programs, local music shows, which you don't get now. So practically every week we had we were on TV, and this is something I think is very very important, something that is uh, greatly lacking today, because this exposure, this being on TV every week made me, got me known in the, to the general public in some way, got the group known at least. It also built our confidence. And because there were so many of these shows, we were like, we had to come up with songs all the time, we had to rehearse all the time, so we, we, had, we worked quite a lot at it. So after the talent time, we did that. Um, and then I came, to, I went to my friends and said, look, I've got some songs here, why don't we sing these songs, you see? I wrote these songs, they're quite nice, you know? And they said, no, 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 you know, no, no, I'm not interested. Because there was no real desire, I mean, nobody had any interest in creating their own material. What for? There's some great songs there already, why, why make it own? So they were not interested. So eventually I left the group. Uh, I said I want to solo because I want to sing only my songs. I'm not interested to just for ever be playing piano for you, you know. So I started to take part in talent time. I had to go through the whole thing again. But I went, this time I took part alone. And I went and I, I, I sang always, I auditioned with my own songs. I mean, it's almost after the first line of singing, they say, okay, thank you, goodbye. They're not, they're just, nobody was just interested at all to hear what I had to say, I mean, my music. Then, um, but I never gave up. That was the thing. I just kept doing it and doing it. And at the same time, I had recorded some songs, you know, on a, you know, a cassette is cassette player. <laughs> In those days, uh, they had you can, you know, little portable things. You can press play and record, and then you can sing it. It sounds terrible, but I used to make my demos that way at home. And then um, there was a, in the year after uh, I left school, I left school at 16, by the way, I told you I'm no good at studying. I failed my whole levels, so I kicked out of school. So um, I bummed around before waiting to go to NS. So I took these cassettes and went to record companies, you know. Of course, uh, no one was interested. But I never gave up. Okay, that's another lesson to learn. Just keep, keep on doing it and doing it. So one day I went to take part in a talent time organized by Ray Diffusion. Now you know what Ray Diffusion is? <laughs> I don't think they have it anymore, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's a cable thing, right? Yeah. Digital, Digital box, right? Oh, good. Yeah. That's great. Because that, I got my first break from there. I took part in, uh, I went to, to audition for a talent time called Ready Steady Folk. It's a folk talent time. And I went for the audition, and I was actually late, you know, the auditions were over, so I just went and I said, please, please let me try. So I went in, and the guy who auditioned me, I was so surprised to see, was a man I respected very much, Vernon Cornelius. He used to be from The Quest, and he at that time was working in Rediffusion as a DJ, and it was him that created this talent time. So I went up there and I played my songs, I played two songs. In fact, I played a song called Life Story which I had written just that year, which became, which resurfaced later on. I played that song and he heard it and he said, you know what, I think you're great, okay? And he said, I think there's nobody like you, but I'm not putting it in the talent time. I said, what? But that's what I want. But he said, no, because if you go in the talent time, even if you win, no one will ever hear about you again. 
And this is because there were talent times every week. And there were people that actually just became professional talent time contestants. They just went from talent time to talent time, you know? So it became like it's not the way to become, you know, to get your career. So I said, then how? He said he would put me as a guest artist. Every week while the judges were deliberating, I would go on and sing a song. And that was, I really owe a lot to him for that because it meant that I had to come up with these songs every week. I almost died, but every week for about three, four months, I had to play a new song. And of course, by that time, I had only written something like, you know, three or four songs. I mean, <laughs> and I played them all for him at the audition already. So there I was coming up with all these songs every week. But that was the best experience I had because it really, um, I learned to love songwriting. And then what happened was at the end of it, the finals, right? I said, I got to write something really special for this. I wanted to write something that was totally different from the stuff I had written, which was, you know, folk, right? So a little bit, a little, I wanted to do something that was different. I thought, why not try something that's very Singaporean, something local, you know? I, I, no one had ever done anything like that. And this, we're talking about, is 1973, you know? And then I, I wrote this song called Fried Rice Paradise. That's when I wrote it. Because I thought, okay, let's talk about a song about Singapore. In fact, the song tells about a woman that tried her luck in People's Park and moved her load to Orchard Road and all the Singapore things in there. And it was like, um, there were la there was English in it as well, you know? So I made it quite a fun song about a woman who opens a restaurant called Fried Rice Paradise. So, wrote the song, the finals came, um, sang the song, and then in the panel of judges was uh, a record company executive from EMI. His name Ross Barnett, uh, I think he's Australian.